Welcome to the Level Up Your Band podcast, episode 55. And welcome back to the Level Up Your Band podcast. My name is Gavin Patterson, and I'm here with Julian Pombo. How's it going? Hey. hey. I'm all right. How are you doing? Happy, <laughs> happy yeah, Pancake Day to you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I'm so full of pancakes and Nutella. It's, I feel, yeah. I feel great. I feel really slug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i might but, need some uh, some pancakes later perhaps oh for sure yeah do it 100 um yeah it was great um anyway let's get let's get started with today's episode it's gonna be a good one yep so um just because i mean it's coming up in a year since um the beginning of the covid lockdown for us um it was Mm -hmm. it was the 12th of march for me was my last my last gig um last year 2020 and i think i, I, I think I, I had maybe like a handful of uh recordings and stuff like that before we went into full lockdown i think it was like the 22nd or 23rd or something that britain went into lockdown um uh, but i think like because <laughs> everyone was like oh it's Oh, it's going to be a right pain, you know, for like three weeks or a month, it's just going to be no gigs. I can't believe how bad this is going to be. And here we are 12 <laughs> months later. <laughs> what is gig? What is gig? I forget to gig. I've never... What is that? Yeah, so <laughs> so we thought we'd do an episode on how, um, how we've, like me and Julian, have stayed sort of musically inspired and sane, to be frank, um, mm. when you're not allowed to play music. Um, yeah. So, what kind of things we've done over the last year? Um, you can go first if you wish. If you want to share some cool some things yeah, that you've I done, I think the the for sure. I, let's just start with real basic stuff that I've always done. This is I I used to, I've done this since before lockdown, and one of the things, one of the habits I got myself into was to have my instruments out and i'm not meaning like uh, uh, guitars on like the sofa i'm quite bad for that um rachel gets at me for that but like um i have i don't have an instrument in a case and uh or if i do it's minimal like uh all of my instruments are either hanging up in a wall or on a stand right. or somewhere and i can basically i can grab it and i can play it whenever i like mm -hmm. Um, because and the reason for that is that um, it, you don't think about it, but like um, things like cases come, bec it, it becomes a barrier. Yep. It becomes an extra step yep. to you making music, and I'll, sometimes that can be enough for you to go, "Nah, I I'm can't be bothered." Yep. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So always, like honestly, like uh, the wee wall mounts that I got were like. Yeah, yeah, cheap. Five pounds each, yeah. something like that. You just need to get yourself some decent raw plugs mm -hmm. that are gonna, you know, with withstand the weight of your instruments and just get drilling and just hang them all up. Plus, it looks cool. Yeah, it Guitars looks great. Wall, just yeah. having instruments on the walls, you know. Yep. Um, and like, so for example, like you, yeah, you can't really see it, um, but like, uh, my monitor is like my computer monitor is there i've got an electric guitar there i've got a bass to my right and then i've got a ukulele mm. another bass another bass and behind me i've got my i've got an acoustic guitar um i've got a clarinet which i've been failing at learning um <laughs> but hey and a keyboard uh, i'll get I'll, I'll get there one day and obviously keyboard you know i just i i, I have stuff out I, and i have my tenor guitar over here in the corner as well like you can you can hear that yeah um it sounds yeah. trivial but it really it really goes a long way it seems totally it's not it's totally not yeah. trivial at all exactly um just 
keep your instruments out. It's the same here, the like um, because the studio has been free, because we're obviously we're not allowed mm -hmm. to record under lockdown. I mean, lockdown was lifted uh, here through the summer a little bit, so I did have some mm. recordings through the summer, but less than mm -hmm. I usually would because well, everyone's broke and they can't afford recordings, and of course, no one. No one had been rehearsing up until that point, so everyone's really rusty, mm -hmm. so they didn't want to come and record, understandably. Mm -hmm. So um, the studio, usually in a normal year, is packed. Like, it's it's always got something going on. So I never have my drum kit set up. For me, it's usually set up for a session. Um, and there's a that's a massive barrier for me, Like because if I want to go and practice drums, I need to set up the kit for me, get all my cymbals out, and it's, it's a massive pain. Um, You've also got a gigantic kit, which doesn't help. I mean, well, even... I, I mean, your, your kit is bigger than most kits. It is a big kit, but I, I mean, I, I can set up the just a small version of it and still play, but, it, but it's nothing like just grabbing... I mean, I've got a bass guitar sitting behind me. I can just literally just, in two seconds, it's in my lap and I can play it. But the drums, yeah. oh, such a pain, but... While, while in lockdown, the kit's been set up constant. It's just been up the whole mm -hmm. time. And if I want to play drums, I just walk over to the drums and sit down and play. And that's it's made a huge a huge impact um, to the point where mm -hmm. I I recorded a drum cover and stuck it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I used to do drum covers um, a few years ago, five, six, seven years ago, whatever it was, just for... It was before I was in lots and lots of bands, um, or I was in lots of lo I, I was in lots of bands, but none of them paid, and I started playing drum covers as a sort of business card. So if anyone was looking mm. for a wedding band drummer or something, I could just say, "Here's my YouTube cha YouTube channel, and here's me playing some stuff." Um, so that that's kind of why I did it, and I, I kind of stopped doing it because I was so busy, and the kit was set up, and I was like, "You know what? I'll set up the camera." And I'll, I'll the mics are already on the kit. I'll just I'll just do a tune. And there was there was a a song I've I've always wanted to do since I was about eighteen. Um, and I just I just let I'm just going to record this tune. It's a a real it was a real like difficult one to do. Uh, it was like twenty four minutes long, and and I, I spent some time, and the kit was set up, and I was practicing every day, and it was like, yes, this is good. I wouldn't be able to do this mm -hmm. in a normal in normal times, and that that's really helped. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, it's not trivial at all. Like have your instruments easily accessible because that just that having it in the case or in the car is just a, it might not sound like a, a big barrier, but it, it can be if you're like not motivated and you're like, oh, I can't be bothered. I'll just go and do something else. Yeah, it totally. Yeah, yeah. The the one that I obviously there's going to be some instruments I should say there's going to be some instruments that you want to put away as soon as you're done with them. So like my flute, your of course, flutes, for example. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know, for it, that's kind of different because that just becomes a part of the routine, of sort of like getting it out, assembling it, and then cleaning it when you're done, putting it away, kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. like, um, it doesn't work for every instrument, but you know, uh, guitars, mandolins, I don't know about violins because I'm, I'm not that knowledgeable, but double bass, uh, at the moment it's in the case, but uh, I've been, I've been wanting to play it for ages, so I'm going to, I'm going to make space for it. Yeah. Make space for the bass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's a poet um, and he doesn't know it. It's such a dumb joke. <laughs> it doesn't even... It's not even a joke. It's just a stupid rhyme. Um, right. So, yeah. Just keep your instruments out. It's a really good one. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just go through the ones I wrote. Um, go for it. This one's kind of silly, but it helps. Mm -hmm. um, create music, even if it's terrible or dumb. Um... I kind of I started doing this so I I have a little YouTube channel mm -hmm. um which is just for gaming videos and it's just for fun that's another thing um I suppose that's got nothing to do with being musically inspired but it's just I was like I need something to do something fun yeah, something yeah, yeah. different um but part of it it one of the things that I started doing was making really terrible 
like janky covers. They're of fantastic. Songs. May I say? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and other things. Honestly, like I spend most of my days just coming up with terrible songs that are like they're not even good. They don't rhyme. I just make stuff up, and you know you you're sitting there going, "Well, how, how's that helpful?" It's actually more help if, if you're a if if you are like a, like a songwriter or something like that, um, or you know you you do that kind of stuff. Writing silly songs is a really good way to sort of just like loosen up a little bit because mm-hmm. sometimes things can get a little bit too serious. I don't know. Write a song about like I I, I wrote a song recently um, about how I, it's a country song about how much I want a banjo. Um, <laughs> I might just perform it. I'll just do it. Um, oh. I'll get my guitar. Here we go. Uh, Is it copyrighted? N- no, well, maybe I should copyright it before uh, <laughs> this episode airs so nobody steals it. Uh, it's golden. Golden. Uh, 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 I wish I had a banjo. It's all I ever need. I wish I had a banjo. Please give me. I wish I had a banjo Just sitting on my knee I wish I had a banjo next to me (laughs) That's it, that's it And then I've attempted to write little verses like I wouldn't need a horse And I wouldn't need a car Cause they won't take me I I don't know, like just whatever Yeah, yeah Uh, (laughs) That's amazing Um <clears throat> write dumb songs. Uh, just write stuff. You 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 might find that you might come out with something like I don't know. You might come out with something passable, and if you don't, then it's just it's good fun anyway. Yeah, you know yeah. that's it, like the whole wanting a banjo thing's just become a bit of like a joke between me and Rachel now. Right. You know. Right. Who knows? I might get a banjo one day if I just sing it enough. Banjos are cool, I guess. Banjos are cool. I've always wanted. <laughs> that's it. That's is that's it a, a drum? Is it a guitar? What is actually, it? I've always wanted a banjo. Um, right. There is an interesting. Uh, I need to see if I can find it. There, I found a really cool, like little mini documentary on YouTube about banjos. Fascinating instrument. Fascinating history. Um, really weird origins. Right. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. Just write <laughs> awful music. <laughs> it's it's one of the best things that you can. It's one of the most liberating things you can do. Uh huh. Um, and you'll find that it will just it will spark stuff. Yeah. Your creativity, ideas. You know. Yep. Um. Do it. Yep. One hundred percent. Yep. You know, it doesn't have to be. You don't have to write lyrics. Um, it could just be like a really stupid melody. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yep. I mean that—that's that's um, what band practices were like. Um, when you when you practice with your band, you're writing with your band. Nine, like we've said this before, ninety-five percent of what you come up with is absolute garbage. But it, you're you're trying to mm-hmm. you're trying to sift through to get that gold. Um, mm-hmm. And it's that it's that process that's the it's the fun part because because you know you're going to get rewarded with this great idea. It makes the action of doing it worth it. Um, and the same goes for writing at home. Um, mm-hmm. It's like you keep doing the thing because you know, you know, from past experience that eventually you'll land on something that will really stick, and it's 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 mm-hmm. a great feeling to have that. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I'll I'll add in one then just now. Um, <clears throat> this is this is a. See, I, I'm I'm a bit of a weirdo. I'm a musician who doesn't really like or listen to music, but mm. um, <laughs> a bit strange. I've been listening to other other well music styles or just music in general that I would not usually do, not usually listen to, um, just to just to see what's happening. Um, 
mm-hmm. because it's always good, at, like as a musician and especially as a sound engineer, to hear what other mm-hmm. people are doing sonically with their music. Not necessarily musically, but what other sound engineers are doing uh, sonically to the sound. Um, that's that's helped mm. me. I like listening to different types of producers, different types of mixing engineers, and what yeah. what their take on a drum kit is because. Everyone, everyone who mixes, everyone sounds different. Um, you could have yeah. one song and get ten different engineers to mix it, and they'll all sound different. Um, I mix drums differently from someone else, um, and someone who who's a guitarist will mix. Who, he'll mix different to how I mix guitars because I'm a drummer. Um, I listen to drums differently than other people, and I always find it fascinating when. Uh, a song has been mixed by someone who's not a drummer and just to hear the different emphasis especially guitarists when guitarists mix and um, the guitars always sound really great there's a great sonic palette of guitars and the drums are kind of uh not as as present in the mix I, I've, I've seen that a few times and i've been listening to mm. a lot of different mixes and productions and it's it's fun because you try and you know to, to bring it back to your own thing how can I yeah. implement this in my own you know like I like the sound of this thing uh, that this guy's doing mm. um, how can I how can I emulate that or because you know it's not imitation or uh, plagiarism or anything it's just trying to expand your influences we've said this before listening to as many styles of music as possible is, is a really good thing yeah yeah um, it is it Totally. And, um, <coughs> yeah, uh, trying to, I suppose from a, from a, from a, from a music perspective, you, you'll, you'll, you'll listen to things and you'll, then you'll pick up, you'll pick things up that you won't have thought about trying before Yeah, yeah. Uh, on your instrument, you know, so like, um, techniques and things. Yeah. Uh, yeah totally um things that um something that i would like to do a little bit more experimentation with but with a with a pace it's a little bit more difficult because it, it requires setup and it means that i i need to pick one of my bases and go that this is going to be you for the rest of your uh, working life as a bass guitar are you talking about fretless you know uh, it's playing with alternate uh tunings and things like that oh, okay right. it requires quite a lot of setup you know um truss rods and whatever just because there's so much tension and strings right, but yeah. like uh, for um uh guitar it's a little bit easier um you can you can m- mess about with alternate tunes a bit more just as long as they're not too not too extreme but um you know th- uh, styles of music like math rock for example yeah things like that um they they use a lot of open tunings and it just gives them a <sighs> you know, capos, things like that. It gives them, opens up the 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 guitar and opens up what you can do. So, yep. um, that's, I don't know, it's one example. Um, appropriate uh, stylings and things from other, other styles yeah, of yeah. music, you know? Yeah. Like, um, I, I mean, sure, maybe you're, let's say you, you play in a metal band, right? Mm. Um, and you're looking for a way to spice up your solos. Yep. This is going to sound crazy, Mm -hmm. but like maybe, maybe you implement a little bit of uh, chicken picking, you know, country music. (laughs) I don't know if you've ever heard like country guitar solos. They're insane. Yeah. yeah. Like Mm -hmm. some (laughs) like, like, like electric, um, country guitarists are like some of the best out there. Yeah. You know, and it's this combination of like, I mean, you're playing with so much gain anyway that, you know, if you use your fingers, it's going to sound the same. Just like, so it's that act of like, you know, playing with a pick on your fingers and alternating and doing things like that. I could open up you playing a lot more, you know. Mm. Um, there was a, speaking of like doing things differently, um, things that uh, from a an engineer's perspective, not necessarily... Um, musician things that other people do an example would be because I'm a drummer 
I always tend to mix drums from the perspective of the drummer. Um, so the hi hats, well, if you're right handed, mm. obviously, um, the hi hats on the left, the floor toms on the right. Um, but I would say a majority of m music has it in reverse, has it audience perspective. Same goes for piano. Um, you can imagine yourself in front of a piano, the low notes being on the left, the high notes being on the right, and you, you pan them accordingly in the recording. So when you put your headphones on, you can hear the low notes on the left and the, the keys, the, the high keys on the right. But like, see flipping that round, how much it changes. It might sound ridiculous, but to me, um, I should, I should maybe, I should maybe do that in my next mix. Like, just mix audience pers perspective for everything. I always mm. mix um, musician perspective, um, mm. always drummer perspective and piano. Pianist perspective, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, bec maybe because I am a musician, I just the sound the other way around just makes me dizzy. I like it's just it's weird. Um, but <laughs> who knows? I mean, maybe if I I change that up, um, it might I don't know. It might unlock something. It might it maybe it maybe it maybe nothing. But just little things like that. I'm just talking from my own perspective. That's something yeah, totally. I. That's the type of crap I think about. Uh, late at night. Mm. <laughs> should I <laughs> should I pan my drums differently? Uh. <laughs> uh. So you know, you man. you put something on here, number two. Um, learn apart from your favorite song. Challenge yourself. Um, well, that's that's kind of yeah. that's kind of what I did. Uh, it, in, it's in the kind of what lockdown. you did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, the the way that I see it is kind of like it, th th there's two different aspects to it because you can learn pieces of music, but you can also work on your technique. This is a great time to work on your technique, you know. Like, um, I watched a really inspiring video. Um, samurai guitarist YouTuber, um, where he he did like a thirty day speed challenge, right? And he was like, I've not worked on my uh, alternate picking speed uh, for like however many years yeah, and I've probably gotten worse so he basically was like I just want to be able to play a lot faster so he just challenged himself he just made a plan and recorded his his progress and mm. um, yeah because you can challenge yourself that way just find something yeah. that you can that you could work on and, and work on it. Yep. And um, sometimes for me, I don't know, it's probably everybody, but like uh, it could be easy to fall into the trap of like, oh, this song is completely, I'll never be able to play it. It's too hard. You know, like yep. Um, yep. I, I'll only ever be able to spectate. Learn it. You know, if you're break it down, um, break it down, and then with take bite-sized chunks out of it. If you yeah, if you look at the whole exactly. big thing, you're like, oh, overwhelming. Yeah. So like, I I did that with um, roundabout, and there's still a couple of bits I can I can work on a little bit more, um, but I was like, that the baseline is is amazing. I want to be able to emulate that tone. I want to work on my on my pick playing on bass as well. Yeah. Like this is going to be a really good opportunity for it. So I sat down and learned it, and mm -hmm. um, I still occasionally go back to it, right. and just because it's now it's just fun. I just like I like that I can play that tune now. Um, but yeah, and I, I learned a lot of I learned I learned a lot of stuff from it, and uh, it's a good ear exercise as well. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Do it, just do it. Learn a song. Um, even learn stuff that you think is going to be really easy. You'll actually find mm -hmm. that it's probably a little bit more difficult. Um, things like the Ramones, you know, actually playing the stuff like how they play it. You're thinking, oh, Ramones, that's easy. No, it ain't, because you're down picking so fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just down picks. That's how they play. It's just down. It's much harder than you think. It's all on the wrist. Yep. Uh, that's all I'll say. Um, but yeah, just pick pick a couple of songs, learn them. It's funny. Uh, the um, the cover I did uh, the other week. Um, the hardest part. 
the, 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 the song's quite long. It's got a lot of technical parts. The hardest part mm-hmm. was the part was that was in 4-4. It was just in... <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. the, the, the hard part was it was uh, such a tight rhythmical pocket. It's, it's mm. such a groovy beat. Um, it's taken me years to perfect that. Um, yeah. Like the rest of it's just like all play 7 8, all play 13 8, or play wh- whatever it is. Like it's fine. That's that's the easy part. It's trying to, uh, as a drummer, um, technical drumming is not as hard as it, as it looks, honestly. If you can if you can count, you can play it. Um, if you mm. slow practice and eventually you get it, but see trying to play groovy in the pocket on four, you know, f- four four beats in a bar, and remain in time and don't trip up and don't fall over and keep it regular mm. and have a nice strong backbeat and people want to dance to it. That's hard, hard, yeah. hard, hard, well, hard. It's like um, it's like in this just reminded me of something, but it, it, it's like in um, do you watch? The Great British Bake Off. I don't have TV. I used to, yeah. You ever watched years it? ago, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like it's the same thing in there. Like you know, they they all these amateur makers are like making these like really complicated, Technical like stuff. you know, like complex <clears throat> like cakes or whatever, really complex flavors and stuff. And then they ask them for a challenge. Oh, make some shortbread or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And they they all crap the bed except like one or two people, yeah. you know. And they're the real OG. Like bakers, you know, yeah. the ones that can just make a flawless shortbread, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. Me, th- like there's doing a there's a Scottish the basics properly. There's a Scottish um, sweet. It's it's really popular here called tablet. Now it's it's basically yes. just sugar and water. It's so simple, <laughs> but it is damn hard to make. And it's it, yeah. it's it's some of the, the simplest stuff. If you do the simplest stuff well. That's where the money is, man. See, see if you can do simple, yeah. really, 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 really proficiently. You'll get hired yeah. to do any gig ever. Like, yeah, it's like um, it's like Ray Brown said. It's like don't don't focus on solos. Don't focus on being able to play really fast. Yeah, get a good tone and play in tune, and you'll be gigging forever. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know? So true. Such good advice. Um, drummers, go yeah. go watch some Bernard Purdy videos. <laughs> Phenomenal. You know Bernard Purdy? Yeah. Yes, He's I do. Absolute, yeah. absolute legend. Um, yeah. That that guy is. That's that's basically what he preaches all the time for drummers. Is um, he's not a technical drummer whatsoever, but he he knows how to maintain a pocket. You know, he just mm-hmm. he he he'll just sit there in the back. He's he's. He's played on like probably most of the music that came out of um, America in the in the nineteen seventies. Mm-hmm. He's like one of the most recorded session drummers of all time. He's, he was on everything. Um, mm-hmm. I think he even played on a Beatles song, believe it or not. Um, yeah, yeah, go watch him. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. So uh, we'll move on. You've done the creating terrible dumb music yeah yeah i'm sorry <laughs> i went I, I kind of went off piste with the with the i was like uh this isn't in, even in a in a good order so so anyway. we'll move on to the, um, the fourth one yeah i think this one kind of impacts me uh probably impacts people more than they think uh-huh um which is social media for musicians can be a little sucky yeah uh sometimes in the way that um uh, it it becomes this sort of like you can easily fall into the trap of like oh everybody's doing really well and I'm not doing well and <laughs> uh, and you get all like caught up in your own spiral of like I don't know like self pity or whatever yeah. um so just watch out for that um if you if you notice that um Remember that everybody is, even the people who are successful and doing well are going to be, are are in the exact same boat as us, depending on where they're living. Yeah, yeah. Um, There was one time, I, I, I got a bit annoyed, not at, not at him 
but uh, just the way things have been handled. There's an Australian musician and he's um, Ray Thistlewit. He's great, fantastic, really great keys player, just all round musician, good, great singer as well. Um, and he just put, it was like an Instagram post and he was just like, oh, come down to such and such place and play in a gig. And I was like, you're playing gigs? <laughs> yeah. How? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then it wasn't until i found out that like um yeah uh, like uh, coronavirus in australia in australia has been handled totally very much yeah. totally differently and musicians can kind of and it's to do with states as well like the states in australia are so big that you can like yeah they're almost like many yeah well not quite many well they are like many countries within themselves so like people aren't really allowed to leave this the states right. from what i understand that's right um they can but you can gig in your own in your own state yep. it looks like britain, so that's what he's doing britain is the size of a postage stamp and there's 60 million people <laughs> crammed into this tiny little island so yeah. it's really difficult to yeah uh, that's that's why we are still not gigging um yeah so a good m mindset to have uh which i implemented when i was younger maybe my late teens i've kind of realized that it's kind of a toxic me mentality to <clears throat> look at other social media posts like drummers and stuff and like oh, how did they get that gig how, that, 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 I'm better than them yeah. uh, that blah yeah. blah blah so yeah. instead when you get that visceral reaction when you see the thing like oh, oh you, instead go oh good on them I wonder how they did that like think oh how can I emulate or how can I how can I learn from learn them, from them you know? learn from them like they're not they're not um, your enemies they're not your competition they're no. they're potential colleagues no. potential friends well that, that, that's yeah, how you totally, should view exactly. it you know this is like for me uh this is like you know down to years of 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 programming of like doing music competitions and things like that which i wish i'd never done because then you start seeing other people that you could be working with as competition that's not how it works it's not healthy you know it's it's not healthy uh this we're, we're not in sports no, Here. no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, it's a creative industry and you can only, you can't, you can create by yourself, sure, but you, it's better to create with with other people. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of what I was sort of getting at. And don't feel pressured, like, treat, don't feel pressured to um, post a lot to your social media every day. I, kn I know there was, there's an Instagram guitarist who, um, Matteo Sasato, who's actually, uh, he's like one of the biggest Instagram guitarists mm. and, and best, one of the greatest guitarists out there. And he's just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to be posting anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and yeah. You don't need I mean, to like, do you, it. You got to do what you, <coughs> yeah. That's the thing. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but don't yeah, don't don't become a slave to it, you know. Yep. Um Um so there's another couple of things that um I think it's important if you have a band especially. Um Yeah. This is level up your band after all. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> something that uh you should all be doing anyway and uh, we we've kind of started doing it a bit more because it's good yeah. is having a weekly or monthly or whatever zoom call with your band yeah. i mean and i mean like, oh zoom oh whatever blah blah but just checking in every now and again yeah and if you if you have technically savvy band members which most of them are but some of them aren't yeah egg uh, set up a discord server and hopefully they all join alien and scott if you're listening to this, join the Discord server that I made. <laughs> For oh, goodness sake. Calling it's out been people. weeks. <laughs> I'm joking. Yes, Julian <laughs> made a Discord uh, for our band and he's angry because not everyone has joined it. Um, <laughs> I, want, I want people to use it. Well, you need to start posting tasty memes and attract people. That's so, actually, that's a good point. Maybe I could start po posting just memes of Alien and Scott until they join. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Yeah. I've been thinking about it. I thought maybe that's too mean, but no, I'll do it. Um, 
Uh, whatever keeps you going, man. Like, <coughs> oh yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, keep touching touching base with your band because they're not just your colleagues. They're I would be assuming that your bandmates are also your friends. You know, mm-hmm. I would have thought. Yep. Uh, if you're if that isn't the case. Uh, listen to a couple of the episodes that we did about being in a band, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 see where you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's it's just good. And I mean, we we we're really lacking the sort of like social connections that I mean, even I as I'm not a particularly extroverted person. Same. You know, but uh, I really took for granted the um, the rehearsals and things, and you know, even going to uh, even like teaching my students. E- either when they were coming around here, I was going over Aye. there to teach them. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's re- really important, and the best we can do at the moment is online but hey it's still it's better than nothing i you know well i've it doesn't have to be to just do sorry <laughs> carry on no sorry um <clears throat> we've been doing uh zoom calls with the band like because i've got a you know a fun creative originals band which i do for fun i do because i want to create new music with like-minded people that's erisco mm-hmm. And I'm also in a money-making wedding band that I do for the money, but it happens to be fun and enjoyable as well. Um, and I have Zoom calls with both bands. It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm friends with the Erisco lot and the, the, the wedding band's just, oh, they're just work colleagues, I don't really care. No, we, we have a monthly, you know, catch-up just to see, oh, what are we all doing? You know, I mean, it's a wedding band. We haven't gigged since March, like I said. We have nothing in the foreseeable future until things are announced. Um, that we can open up and have weddings again. Uh, there's no reason really for us to have these Zoom calls. There's nothing we can do other than just have a chat or maybe revise the set list for the next time we're out. Or you know, it's it. But yeah. but just just seeing their faces because these you know, especially mm-hmm. in wedding bands, like um, you see them every week, um, every single week, every weekend for a whole year, um, sometimes three times a week. Um, so you you can it's weird when all that changes. So it's good to just even just have a group Zoom call. It sounds dead cheesy and all that, but you kind of you you need it. You kind of do. Um, there was one more kind of ties in with the hanging your instruments up thing. Mm. So I think this is impo- important just in general, um, not necessarily music um, mm-hmm. thing. If you live in a house with others and um, you're a musician, I think it's really important that you have a room that you can go into, that you can shut out the rest of your... Yeah. um, What do you call it? Co-inhabitors. And Mm -hmm. and do your music. A space that... and, And really spend time and effort in making that place a really comfortable beautiful place to sit in if it's an absolute crap mm-hmm. heap and there's you know like dust and junk and just ev- everything's a mess a chaotic disaster it's not going to be a happy nice environment to sit in yeah i'm not gonna lie i'm looking at my pl- it happens so i have to keep on top of it you have to keep on top of it just yeah. en- entry entropy yes it just like things th- you things start happening and you're like yeah, uh, yeah. Things don't things don't stay ordered by themselves. They have to be maintained. No. Um, so I've sp- I've um, spent time on my space, the spaces that I spend my yeah. my most time in. I've made mm. an effort to make them more pleasant to be in. Because if you're going to be stuck in a space for extended periods of time, you want that space to be as nice as possible. And it's just, I don't know. I'm I'm a bit of a strange person. See, when I even this is even in normal times, I, um. Back when things were normal, uh, maybe about three times a week, four times a week, I would have mixing days. So mm-hmm. in the, the days that I wasn't, you know, recording podcasts or recording bands or playing gigs was the 
the, the space left was for mixing the music that was recorded. And mm-hmm. every time I would sit down to mix, would come come through in the morning, I would first thing I would do had like the morning ritual was I would open up the studio, get everything powered up, powered on, turned on, and if the place was cluttered or messy, or my desk was messy, I would give it a clean. I would get the coffee on, hoover the floor, mm-hmm. tidy up the cables yeah. from the session bef- last night, get the place spick and span, sit and drink my coffee, open up Cubase, open up the session, and then everything would be all neat and tidy and ready to go. And if I didn't do that, it would be on my mind. So I would get the place looking great, and I would sit down, you know, my cup of coffee, and I would get right into the music, and I would I would be so productive. I'd be like, boom, bam, beam, bam, boom, boom. I'm a, I would have a song mixed in an hour, an hour and a half. Get all my all my files all prepped. Everything's all organised. Like some something really satisfying about that. Um, it's just me. Like I can't sit. No, no, I I'm, I can't I'm sit in a pig I try to... and and be creative. And no, I can't, no, I can't do it. No, I I um. Yeah, I'm 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 kind of the same. Like if I, I I've noticed recently, I you just become a little bit more distracted by something here, something there, and you're like, huh, you know. So I, I usually it's just a it's a day, and I just like I just spend a day and like just yeah. I clean out my computer. Uh, you know, I, I dust it. I did that yesterday. Uh, I dust my yeah yeah. Um, I'm looking at it just now. I'm like, hmm. Do you another one? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit more regular than you think. It is, yeah. Um, if you can see it but and it's I, annoying you, whatever it happens to be, if, it, <laughs> if it's like even something simple like, oh, that picture's not straight, oh, that that yeah. rug is needing a Hoover, oh, I need to tidy up those cables. Just stop and do it. Get it done. Yeah. It's something that you can actually yeah. take control of and go and do. It's there to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, it's amazing it's how not, much it you're not you're not wasting helps. your time. It, you find that it actually it takes uh, it takes less time than you think it does. Yeah, yeah. You know uh, what I like to do because um, I just I hate the monotony of it. So I I just listen to a podcast. I just put something same, on. Same. I just listen to <clears throat> you know uh, or an audiobook, whatever. Yep. Uh, a lecture, whatever, and I'm just like. I you love know, doing that because um, when when a band leaves, usually uh, when bands came, <laughs> I had a massive clean up routine because you've got the drums, you've probably just finished uh, tracking vocals, so the drums are probably moved, and because of my vo- I put my vocal booth up the back where the drums would usually mm-hmm. sit, so the drums are all kind of just all across the floor. The, the k- k- I've got maybe like. 25 XLR cables all just randomly spaghettied all over the carpet. So I would come in the next day and I would, you know, roll my sleeves up, stick my headphones in, stick on an audiobook and just roll up cables, put mics away, tidy up the drums, hoover the carpet, take the bins out, dust down, get rid of the, I don't know, the energy juice stains in the carpet and, <laughs> like, genuinely, um, and oh, get, the, no. get the place spick and span and then, I, I don't know, there's just something, I, I just really enjoy doing that. Yeah. Maybe I'm a weirdo. No, that's, no, listen, man, uh, it, no, I think it, I think it's just more of a, I've noticed I, I like doing stuff like, I think it's just a, sort of like, you know, it's, it's an adult growing thing. Growing up, yeah. You just like, you, you, it's a growing up thing, you just like doing the, uh, the mundane tasks become, it just make them interesting, you know. So for me, it's not like, uh, it, you know, it's not an opportunity to like, you know, it's an opportunity for me to learn something. So next time you're needing to do a, um, I don't know, you're you're needing to do a, a a clean up session or something, and you're like, oh, I'm a bit behind on some level up your bot <laughs> podcast, yeah, yeah. <laughs> level up your band, yeah, uh, podcast episodes. You can just yep. whap the old two, ones on two times speed. Just go for it. <laughs> Wait. I can't listen to stuff on two times speed. The fastest I can listen to something. It depends. There, there, are, there are a couple of like audiobooks that I have. Why are you upside down? I don't know. I just fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I just randomly um, flipped upside down. Um. Uh, it depends on what it is. Two <clears throat> times speed can be a bit fast for me. I, uh, uh, one point five. Yep. 
one point seven five. Yeah. But um, sometimes like regular speed can be a bit like oh, come it's on. slow. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Sometimes. Speaking of it podcasts, depends on who's speaking. Um, if you're competent in something, but well, it doesn't have to be music. If you if you are quite good at doing something like mixing music or writing songs or playing guitar, start a podcast. Um, or you have it doesn't or whatever or you ha you're like whatever it a is, particularly yeah. funny individual. Yes, and you have interesting takes on things. Uh -huh. Or somebody's told you that you are, or you think you do, then you know, just do a little yep, little podcast. Yep. If you if if you or videos, or it's whatever. not that hard. Um, if 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 anyone's no. actually wanting to start a podcast, and you don't know the first thing about how to do that, um, give me a message. Just messages on on the website or on Instagram or whatever. Level up your band, and yeah, we'll mm -hmm. we'll we'll help you if, if that's the thing you were thinking of doing <clears throat> well we we have a podcast if you hadn't noticed uh, <laughs> so i'm uh, happy to give advice to anyone if they're totally looking to do it but yeah that's kind of that's kind of how i have gotten through the lockdown is just um like what we've just talked about just it's the small things that all add up to to make things a little bit you know, more easy um, until we can get gigging again and back to creating music. But yeah, um, if there's nothing else, um, we'll probably just wrap it up there unless you have anything else you want to add. No, not really. Um, I think... Nah, I'm... Um, yeah. I, just start with the really easy stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Um, sometimes listening to other styles of music can be a little bit daunting, especially if you don't know where to start. Um, but start with the basics. Keep 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 a, an instrument out. You know, yeah. If you have a guitar that you really like, like your your Telecaster or your Les Paul, or whatever, yep. make sure that guitar stays out. And you'll find you pick it up yeah. more often than you think. Be string it every now and again. Give it a wee dust, a wee polish. Yeah, exactly. That's why I tell um, like um, parents of like kids that I teach. I'm like, don't, don't tell them to put away their instruments. <laughs> tell them to keep them out. Get a stand. Get a stand for yeah. the instrument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, because then they'll practice it more. Yep. Clever. Um, but I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> a sneaky deviant. Um, uh, I know, I know. Um, but yeah, I think start with the really easy stuff, you know. Um, and yeah, Take I don't it know. from there. Cool. Take it from there. So, as always, if you're enjoying our wee podcast, give us a review and rating mm -hmm. wherever you happen to listen to it, please. And um, as of a couple of days ago, the as a new pdf up on the on the website that you can download for free and it is to coincide with the studio jargon episode so like de right. decoding the studio or what well, i can't remember what it was called so basically all all of the studio terms that you go to studios and they're like oh can you put a high pass on the xlr and the blah 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 all these words that you don't know what any of them mean so i've written down a good chunk of them um for you to get an English definition of these words. So if you're if you're heading to a studio anytime soon and you're like, hmm, I'll maybe download that PDF, put it on my phone, and if if I can hear folk saying these words, I can just look briefly at the PDF and go, oh, okay, right, that's what he means by that. Because there's some sound engineers are not self-aware whatsoever and they'll just throw out these these terms and uh, musicians, they, they, they just assume that everyone knows what they're talking about, but they don't. Um, so yeah. just a little help, helpful sheet. And if there's any terms on there that, that I've missed out, if there's, there's terms that you hear often, I've, I've probably missed loads out. But those are oh, the ones yeah, totally. I could just think of. I might update them. Send me a list of ones I've missed. If there's like, oh, I don't know what... When people say this, what does this mean? Uh, please, I'd like to know... Um, so that I can keep it updated because uh, I wish I had that 
kind of translation sheet when I was <clears throat> working with fairly highly, highly regarded sound engineers who were throwing out jargon at me and I was embarrassed because I didn't know what any of it meant. Had I had this resource, it would have made my life a lot easier. Um, because, you, you, like, there's this whole, oh, I don't want to be ridiculed. Oh, no, if I, uh, I don't want to seem stupid. Um, no, one, no one really wants that. Um, but you shouldn't be afraid to ask either. But the sheet's mm -hmm. there if you need it. Um, next week, I think we're going to do another... Um, band analysis uh, hmm. rise and fall of I've got one in mind I want to do cool uh, we'll maybe do that and yeah until then hope you all have a fantastic week and we'll see you next time bye bye